Ten years ago, Joel Jackson, a management consultant and entrepreneur, founded a startup that was aimed at addressing a market gap in Africa's automotive industry. The gap was born out of an observation that most vehicles imported into Africa were generally unfit for the continent's road terrain and far from meeting the needs of African consumers. The purpose of Mobius is to be a disruptive car maker uh, in Africa that makes African car for Africa. So where is the disruption? Is that finally we propose a car for Africa which is an all-terrain car. It's an SUV. But not, not any kind of SUV. It's a very simple car that gets the, only the necessary features. Okay, Very robust, very rugged, with a good quality. A, can, a car that can really hold across the time. Okay, a Very easy to service because very simple. Uh, and, and with spare parts available at a good price. So a car really designed and, and made for African needs. This is how Mobius was born and with it came the idea of building the first locally assembled car. The first one, Joel Jackson, just created a, a prototype of, of a car, it was a buggy, and it was just a demonstrator. And with this demonstrator he could collect funds to start the first phase of the company. The first phase materialized in a car called Mobius 2 first generation. It's the car you can already see uh, probably uh, in the Nairobi streets. There are 50 of these cars. Being the pioneer in its field, the first model fell short on some aspects. But a lot of feedback we received from customers at that point in time, they wanted an enclosed cabin. So those are one, some of the changes. They wanted a slightly more powerful engine. So those were some of the changes. They wanted more comfort. And, and uh, they also wanted some ease in drivability, so things like power steering. The seating configuration was also one of the things that they provided feedback that uh, they wanted a more sort of traditional seating arrangement with everybody facing forward. This led to the birth of Mobius 2.0, a more superior version of Mobius second generation car. What it starts is initial sketches. Those sketches are put on the concept of the vehicle, how to look from outside and then also inside. As we do that, the next step is then to start creating detailed drawings. This is what we will actually give to suppliers to make the parts. This will say what material to use, how big it is, how wide it is, how heavy it is. And once those are made, those are then brought back in-house. We then start assembling the vehicle. Once we've assembled, we will go through certain phases of uh, testing it, finding issues, redoing it again, making new samples retesting up to the point we feel we are comfortable that we have reached where we want the car to be and that's when it's available for customers to buy. Mobius entry into the local market comes at a time when local assembly of vehicles is taking root in Kenya. According to the latest leading economic indicators report by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, the number of locally assembled vehicles as at June this year stood at 4,193, which is a 13% increase above the number of vehicles assembled locally during the same period in 2019, a figure that brings hope for greater sale of new locally assembled vehicles compared to imported second-hand vehicles. We currently sell our car at 1.5 million Kenyan shilling when an imported SUV starts around 1.7 million Kenyan shilling and go up to 2.5 million. If you bought a new car of this kind, you would pay probably 4 million Kenyan shilling minimum. Okay, So this is really where is the disruption. The second disruption is the robustness of the car. It's a car that is really all-terrain. You can use it everywhere in Kenya, go on very tough roads, uh, and, and with, with a very good resistance of the car. And if, if it fails, the good thing as well, it's so simple, you can repair it anywhere, at any time, with parts that are very cheap and available, because we have all the spare parts available in Kenya. Mobius' journey has however not been short of challenges, among them being sourcing of capital and finding an ideal workspace to assemble the vehicle. The other challenge has been to recruit the teams to have people who really are skilled enough to do the job because in Mobius we design the car fully. So this car is a full design where we have engineers working with uh, Dassault system Katia stations, which is very sophisticated CAT stations. Uh, this is a second challenge and we went through it. We have a very good team currently really able to design a car. The next challenge has been to, um, uh, to set up the supply chain. Uh, so find all the suppliers. 
So our car will be made of 25% of the car will be locally supplied, 30% from India and 30% from China. Okay. So it's been a long time to find the right suppliers with the right technology to develop the right parts. With the car having passed a majority of Kenya Bureau of Standard Certification tests, Mobius is now awaiting the final nod to begin mass rollout. While loading the government's efforts in encouraging local assembly of vehicles, the company says more incentives are needed. Uh, for instance, uh, we would be happy if we could have, if we could have, uh, uh, I mean, an exemption of the of the corporate tax that will help us significantly or uh, having a VAT at 0% rates at the beginning for the first years so that we could really position our vehicle in, with a very, very aggressive price. While product development and innovation might still be a challenge, this model of Mobius is testament that if you can think it, you can make it. And on the Kenyan roads, the next time you're driving, you can just see a Mobius. The only difference between your car and this car is that it's tailor-made for the Kenyan and African market and the African need. For Metropole TV, my name is Ndero Oganga.